I made my first ciabatta bread, the Italian bread, the other day, and it turned out quite well. To make the bread, you require a biga, B-I-G-A, uh, which is a starter dough. And it takes about 24 hours to produce that. I just discovered there are several different kinds of starter doughs. This is the one that I made, which is very dry. It's now several days old. It's been in the refrigerator. But that's what it looked like when I went to use it. And I forget the exact weight of what I needed, but I, I took off pieces and uh, cut it up. and took off pieces for the weight that I needed. And in the stand mixer, uh, with some room temperature water or whatever, it eventually mixed into a, into a liquid and I got a reasonable result out of the bread. Quite pleased with it. I want to try it again. But I'm going to make a wet biga that I found the recipe for here. I just think that that will simplify it and hopefully get even a, a better rise out of the bread. So we'll make the biga. I'll show you doing that. And then 24 hours from now I'll attempt making another ciabatta. You start with three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And as you probably know, I prefer to use weight, so that's 470 grams. We have to get it out of the container and into the bowl. Guess that's it. Three quarters of a teaspoon of yeast, and I'm using the instant sort of professional baker's yeast. If you're using the regular dry yeast, you probably should uh, um, activate it in a half a cup of the water before you, before you uh, mix it up. But with the instant yeast, that isn't necessary. And to that, you add one and three quarters cups of cold water. So, there is the biga prepared, a wetter version of it, which I think is going to work much better. All you do now is cover that, put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. So, I'll see you in 24 hours and we'll try to make another chapata. Day two, 24 hours later, and the biga has been brought out of the fridge, everything's been measured, and I'm ready to start making the uh, ciabatta. Uh, I'm going to just be giving the weights as I do this, but I have written out the recipe and it is down below the video here. It has both the weights and the dry measure for people who don't prefer to use weights, but I think if I give both it's even more conf confusing. So, Start by putting 1.5 grams of active dry yeast. If you're using the regular active dry yeast, you should prove it for 10 minutes or so in some warm milk. I'm adding the warm milk anyway, but I won't need to prove it because I'm using um, uh, the, uh, well, sort of professional baker's yeast, the instant yeast, the one that most bakeries use now. You can just mix it right in directly with flour. It doesn't have to be proved or anything. To that, I'm going to add um, 143 grams of room temperature water and seven and a half grams of olive oil, which I've already measured here. And 250 grams of the biga. I can get it out of the bowl that I've got it in and get it down into the mixing bowl here. Sticky stuff. Try to 
get it all. Yeah, but it's always going to be a little bit left behind, I guess. Now this gets mixed for about three minutes with the paddle. And again, I'm using the stand mixer. You can do this by hand. It's just a lot more work, that's all. Low speed. I'll bring you back in three minutes' time. Well, it's been about three minutes, and most of the biga has been mixed in with the water and milk and oil there. Still some strands of it, but not a great deal of it. Now I am adding uh, 250 grams of all-purpose flour and 7.5 grams of salt. I'm using a sea salt. It's an iodized sea salt, though. It doesn't really matter. Kosher salt, sea salt, regular table salt, whatever you want to use. Now the rest of these mixing times are fairly critical. It's what's helping to build up the structure. So you can see if you didn't have a stand mixer, you've got a lot of work cut out for you in the next few minutes here. Um, just a little bit maybe. Three minutes with on low with just the paddle mixer, paddle blade. Whatever. I'll bring you back. Three minutes time. If the timer shut off. That was three minutes. And I guess you can see that it's sort of developing into a pretty good dough there. Now remove the paddle. Sometimes it's easier said than done. And there it goes. And scrape off any dough that's attached to the paddle here. Creep down the sides a bit. And this is actually, this is what it is supposed to look like. I was going to say actually what it's supposed to look like, but it is a very wet dough that you're going to be working with. After three minutes on low, now you increase the speed to medium. And let it go for another three minutes. Well, that is three minutes. It has finished its kneading process. Now it goes over to proof or rise for an hour and a half, and I'll show you how I do that. I put mine in an airtight container. It has a lid that seals the airtight, but a bowl covered with plastic wrap, anything like that would work just as well. Would work just as well. container and I even painted it up the sides a little bit not all that critical 
just sort of spread it out there a little. Now it sits in here for an hour and a half, and an hour and a half at room temperature, not in a warmer area like sometimes I proof bread in the oven with the oven light turned on or whatever. Because of all the kneading, the friction has increased the temperature of the dough anyway. So you just let it rise at room temperature for an hour and a half. So I'll bring you back at that point. Well, it's had its hour and a half first proofing. Now you just boom, empty it out onto a well, a well floured surface. And just knead it briefly. I have a scraping board scraping tool here in case I needed it, but I guess I don't this time. It's soft, but it's not that wet. Don't want to work a lot of flour into it. Let's see if that will do, I guess. And you divide it roughly in half. Be accurate, I guess. The interior is still very wet, that's what you want. And it goes on parchment paper is the easiest way. Heavily floured parchment paper, and I have two separate pieces there as you can probably see. Try to make a loaf that is approximately 10 inches long and 4 inches wide. Again, it doesn't have to be that accurate, but that's what you're aiming for. Stretch it out. Try to get it out to four inches. Thereabouts. And now you, with your knuckle or your finger, you heavily dimple it. And this is, believe it or not, to prevent it from rising too much. It will do quite a bit of rising once it gets in the oven. Well, I will say that that is dimpled enough, I guess. Put a fair amount of flour on top. Most recipes say to cover something like this with a damp cloth. Well, anytime I ever did that, the damp cloth sticks to the dough. So I prefer to cover it with flour. It makes a nice looking loaf when it comes out of the oven anyway. Now this sets at room temperature for an hour and a half to two hours. And it gets baked on a baking stone or a pizza stone in the oven. Um, a half hour before it goes in the oven you preheat the oven and the stone to 425 degrees. The only other time that I did this, I put them both on the same pizza stone and they touched, which didn't make that much difference, but I think it would have made a nicer looking loaf if they didn't touch. So since they can be uh, proofed now for an hour and a half to two hours, I'm going to put the first loaf in at an hour and a half, and when it's ready to come out, it will be two hours, and the second loaf can go in. It stays in the oven for 25 minutes, the, the loaf at 425 degrees. And there's things to do there when it goes in. So I will bring you back in an hour and a half time after the oven is preheated and we're ready to put the first loaf in. Loaf number one. Ready to go in the oven on the pizza stone. You it and remove the paper. Not let all the heat out of the oven, yes. For the first 10 minutes, the oven gets steamed three times. So I'll bring you back and show you the second steaming. Five minutes in, and 
spray number two here. You can see the loaf has started to rise. One more spray, I'll bring you back for it. Spray number three. Final spray, and now they cook for another 15 minutes. It cooks for another 15 minutes, rather. Loaf number one is ready to come out of the oven. Looking pretty good, I think. We'll know better when we slice it. I'll bring you back after the second loaf is finished, and maybe this one will be cool enough to cut. Well, they've been out of the oven for a little bit. First one is cooled enough to cut it, I think. I guess you can see that has a pretty good structure inside. Some nice holes. Nice and soft. Cut it again. I've got to taste it, I guess. Nice flavor, nice soft crumb inside, and a good crust on the exterior. The last one, I split some this way, make, and made it into a sandwich. Did it in the panini press. It was excellent. Well, I hope you are interested enough that you'll give this a try. It's a bit involved, but the final product is very good. Thank you very much for watching.